Ladies and gentlemen, truth is stranger than fiction, and today we're going to prove it. Family. Right. Uh, Prince Andrew was introduced to uh, Jeffrey Epstein through uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, and uh, again, the access when it came to a lot of the uh, the finances, the clients, uh, uh, the ability to, to go to major uh, public celebrity events. It came from that relationship with... ...up and down and create a false front for him, which involved the fact that he had multi-million dollars or multi-billion dollars. He may have no money. It's not even relevant. But to make sure that Jeffrey Epstein was working properly, they had an operator from the Mossad who was named Maxwell, the daughter of Robert Maxwell, one of the great... Well, this is True News. I'm Rick Wiles. The Democrats tried for over two years to bring down President Trump by proving that he was elected with the help of the Russian government and that he actively colludes with Moscow to make decisions that benefit Russia. The Russian collusion investigation was ludicrous from the beginning to its ending when special counsel Robert Mueller shut down his probe into Russia's alleged role in the 2016 election. Whereas Mr. Trump's enemies possessed flimsy evidence linking the New York billionaire to the Kremlin, the anti-Trump forces in America have ignored the mountain of solid evidence that connects Donald Trump to Israel. In my opinion, it would be easy to make a case that Donald Trump works for Israel. The Jeffrey Epstein teen sex scandal may provide the smoking gun Mr. Trump's enemies desperately need to remove President Trump from the White House, either by resignation, impeachment, or election defeat next year. Sunshine has a great question, and you kind of answered it a little bit. The question is, why is this happening now, right? I mean, that's the big question. It's like, after all this time, it's. It, would you say it just came to a boiling point? Is it Cernovich's way to show that he's still credible? Is it? Is it uh, a disclosure game to keep the Trump Republic afloat? Or is it like somebody asserted in the chat, they said this is to bring down Trump, which I find hard to believe. I, It seems to be a piece of meat that they're throwing us on some level. What's your speculation on the overall motivation? I mean, it, it seems like you have a pretty well-rounded view of it. I really don't have an answer, Jesse. It really doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, we know that the Q people are going to jump all over this. Right. And the MAGA wearing people's hat wearing people as well. And they're going to say, well, Trump's going after those pedophiles, which right. he's not. Trump is very connected to Jeffrey Epstein. So that doesn't really make much sense on that regard. I don't I mean, is something even going to come of this? So this here's a That's question. my question. Just slowing down within the points that you're making. If this bubbles up and gets more mainstream coverage, maybe Trump would be put in a position where he has to address it, where he would have to disavow. Well, they say that's why Pizzagate came out. Even though yeah. I'm not a um, Pizzagate denier, I, I do believe in it. But they do say it came out because they couldn't go after Trump and Epstein because both Clinton and Trump are connected to Epstein. Right. So they couldn't do that. So Roger Stone released Pizzagate to, to go after Clinton and to torpedo her, kind of like the CMP versus the CFR. I understand, I understand what you're saying. That's a bit overgeneralized that he released it, but definitely the WikiLeaks, Cernovich, Posobiec, uh, Steve Pachenik, uh, Jerome Corsi, yes. Joe Biggs, that whole, right, Lift the Veil, my, you know, Random Rants of Ryan. There's, Pizzagate's huge. That is more appropriately called Pedogate if we actually yes. want to make progress. Okay. Yeah, if we're talking about Franklin, Franklin scandal or McMartin preschool or any right. of that, yes, it's more than just Pizzagate in and of itself. And you're right, Roger Stone is only a cog in the wheel. There are others, uh, Alex Jones, um, being CMP, you know, other people that you mentioned. So yeah, it is more than just Roger Stone, but it's kind of like a convenience thing. So I don't know why this is happening now. I really don't. I don't know, and I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, I. 
I don't. I doubt Epstein's going to flip on anyone. Right. I really do. So. What about just the fact that it keeps the right and left thing going? That people are only going to see. They're only going to see what they want to see. For instance, these days, depending on who you ask, uh, all Jews are pedophiles. All Catholics are pedophiles. All. You know, it just it just keeps the ball moving. It keeps it keeps the ball out of our hands, keeping people fractured. And again, people are just going to see what they want to see. Is that fair to say? Very much so. You know, that's how it's all. It's the you're right about that. Everybody on the left is going to say that they're going to have something where they're going to they're going to blame Trump, but for all for the, all the wrong reasons. You know, the hashtag resist type aspect of right. it and the right are going to be vindicated because they don't see trump in epstein they just see clinton so trump's going after epstein who's a pedophile and a sex trafficker and he's going to go after the clintons because of this so it further divides the left and right and no one gets to the true facts that they're all involved in this hmm. take the red pill Okay, welcome everyone. This is Red Pill, and like I said earlier, the truth is stranger than fiction, and we're going to prove it here today. Some of the things we're going to cover in this video is it's all related to the Epstein scandal and the connections between Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, Robert Maxwell, and Donald Trump, and there are a few other players that we're going to be talking about in here, including uh, involvement in the Mossad. We're going to show in with evidence that Trump is working for Israel, that Ghislaine Maxwell is actually a Mossad handler, that Epstein actually, instead of Ghislaine Maxwell working for Epstein, we're going to show that Epstein works for Ghislaine Maxwell and that she's his handler. Um, the whole Mossad operation, you know, a.k.a. this international sex trafficking ring, we're going to show that it's actually a professional blackmail ring being used to compromise high power people and politicians and even actors to keep them in line to have so that Mossad can have some sort of blackmail to hold over their heads to keep them doing what Israel wants. You know, everybody was talking about, oh, Russian collusion, Russian collusion, blah, blah, bull. It's actually Israeli collusion. And we're going to, we're about to get into this right now. And we're going to also prove. Uh, the connection between uh, Mossad and Robert Maxwell, that's Ghislaine's father. And he was in deep with Mossad as an operative, and he also went rogue, which is why he fell off of his yacht. He was probably, most likely, it was a hit. So, here we go. We're going to get into some of the stuff that the team over at True News is getting into. So, let's, let's take a look. Now, True News has been diligently researching Donald Trump's longtime connection to Jeffrey Epstein and his connections to many of Mr. Epstein's Israeli-linked associates. If Epstein is an Israeli Mossad operative assigned to the task of entrapping influential Americans, Donald Trump may be one of his victims. Mr. Trump's pro-Israel foreign policy may be because Epstein has a mountain of incriminating evidence that he can use to blackmail Donald Trump. This may be the real story of foreign collusion in American politics. Now, before Doc Burkhardt and Edward Zoll join in this discussion of the Epstein sex scandal, there is another big story connected to the New York tycoon, and it leads back to Israel. It involves former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak. He threatened today to sue the UK's Daily Mail newspaper for defamation after it published photographs of Mr. Barak entering Epstein's New York City residence in January 2016. Mr. Barak's face was partially covered by a scarf. He was wearing a large fur hat when he left the Epstein residence. The Daily Mail also published photos of attractive young women 
who entered Epstein's Manhattan home hours later on the same day. Now, the London newspaper insinuated that Barack's visit to Epstein's house was not to discuss business. Now, it was disclosed last week that Epstein invested millions of dollars in an Israeli company owned by Ehud Barak. Barack accused Benjamin Netanyahu as being the source behind the Daily Mail article. He accused Netanyahu of blood libel against a fellow Jew. Now here with the latest information linking Donald Trump to Jeffrey Epstein is True News co-host Edward Zoll along with co-host Doc Burkhart. Gentlemen, uh, welcome back first of thank all. Thank you. Well, glad to have you back, Doc. And, uh, uh, filling in for me uh, for uh, Monday and Tuesday. I, I, I watched the two programs. It was powerful information. So we're going to start today walking our, our way through. It's going to get a lot deeper. Uh, look, I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you are a, a diehard Trump supporter, this is going to be tough for you. Now, don't shoot us. Don't shoot the messenger. We're just doing our job. Report true news. We're not making up anything. We're giving you the facts. We're connecting dots. I've done this for 20 some years. I've connected dots. You know, guys, when, when I started this, this newscast in 1999, Bill Clinton was in the White House. Right. We connected dots with Bill Clinton and the things that he did. Then it was George Bush and I connected dots. And then it was Barack Obama. We connected dots and then it's, it's uh, Donald Trump. We're connecting dots. This is what we do. And, you know, I'm returning to my uh, position of neutrality in the election. Mm. I, I did not get involved. And here we are, you know, we're, we're, on, we're two and a half years into the Trump presidency and there's no repentance on, on the part of the church. No, there's no repentance in America. There's no repentance by President Trump. There's no humility. Um, and. You know, I'm going back to my original position of neutrality. We're going to report the truth. And if people become upset with me, as they have throughout 20 years, Doc, I lost a lot of support when I warned that, that uh, the Bush administration was deceiving us about Iraq wanting to go to war. Right. A lot of people became very angry, walked away, didn't support us. I, I'm still here. God brought, we're talking about the pedophile network. And what I've said many times is that the, the real political party that controls America is not the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, but the perpetual war, criminality, sleaze, corruption, and pedophilia party. Right. That's the party that controls the American uh, society and government. And so we're going after it. And let you know, whatever happens, happens, all right? If, if this leads to, to certain Republicans going down, so be it. If it leads to re Democrats being exposed and brought down, so be it. The main thing is that this criminal regime be exposed and brought down. But I think it's at the heart of the Zionist um, tentacles that are wrapped around America because they've used blackmail Right. to get control of the American government. So we're going to talk about uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump today. Uh, we're just beginning. This is just the beginning. Your, your head's going to be spinning by the end of this program. Um, do, you, do you guys have anything you want to say about the uh, Ehud Barak um, story and, and the Daily Mail? I think we can put the photographs up on the screen. Well, well, first of all, the response to the photograph has, has been just shocking to begin with. And the fact that uh, Ehud Barak is going to invoke uh, you know, the, the old saying that this is blood libel, that uh, both Netanyahu and the Daily Mail have committed some kind of offense by using a public sidewalk in New York to take a picture of him entering the house of a convicted pedophile. Right. So he knew Ehud Barak, former prime minister of Israel. He's in New York City. He clearly knew that Jeffrey Epstein was a convicted pedophile. Right. And it sounds like he knew this photo was going to come up because it was only uh, two days ago at this point that he gave an exclusive interview announcing that he had visited Jeffrey Epstein's 
And this is the media calling it the orgy island, the island that sordid sexual activity was taking place on. He admitted to visiting this island, but he said, he prefaced it by saying, I, well, I, I, I didn't, didn't see any girls. I didn't see any girls. So. Well, wait a minute, he said he met Epstein at least 10 times. Right. But he didn't see any girls there. That's what he's saying. That's right. But he got money for Epstein. A lot of money for, for his, his company. company. This is a uh, 2015. And to be clear, this is after Epstein's conviction. Yes. Which so was in 2008. You know, this is you can't go into a blind. So well, I didn't know he had a conviction like yes. that. He knew it. He 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 sought Epstein for money for his business, and he visited him according to his own words ten times. And that photograph, uh, those photographs were taken in 2016. Now, to be fair to Ehud Barak. Um, it was January, mm. New York City. It would, uh, to say he was covering his face because it was cold. Okay, that's a that's a, a believable story. I mean, anybody who's been in New York City in January knows it's really cold, windy. Um, the Daily Mail was insinuating that he was he was covering his face to disguise his identity. Right, and. Uh, the young ladies who came in later, and they, they did not enter with him at the same time. They entered hours later. They don't appear to be too cold. Uh, doesn't look like they, they're suffering frostbite. But, but he is a Middle Eastern man yes. in New York City, and so he, he might have got a little chilled. There. When he came out, he was wearing a big fur hat, which he's not wearing going in. So did he leave his hat there on a previous visit? <laughs> Where did the hat or did come from? Did, did, did he borrow Jeff's hat? I mean, was so, this, we, I we really want to be borrowing anything from Jeffrey Epstein. And are there any photographs of Jeffrey Epstein wearing a giant fur hat? And I don't think so. Um, so there's uh, there's obvious suspicion there. And, and so Ehud Barak said today he's going to sue the Daily Mail if they did not take down the article and the photographs. Did they do it? Uh, the, the article is still up and the photographs are still embedded at the time of our program. So they've called his bluff on this. And Rick, uh, when it comes down to this, there is public interest in the story. I, I can't speak to the legality of it, but clearly, if uh, a former prime minister of, of what, I'll take, I'll take our government at our own word, one of the greatest allies of America in the Middle East, is seen visiting the house of a convicted pedophile and now the alleged headquarters of a uh, purportedly international sex trafficking ring, don't you think that would be a story of interest? Any, any paper in the world should have the right to it's publish It's a huge that? story. The Epstein scandal is getting worse by the day. It really is. It's getting worse by the day. And now they're invoking words like blood libel in all this. That's how serious they're taking it. And he's accusing Netanyahu of a blood libel. A fellow Jew. Of yes, blood. a blood libel. Right. Because uh, Barack is uh, running against Netanyahu if they have another election. So right as of right now, Barack is... Netanyahu's strongest opponent because uh, Benny Gantz has pretty much faded away and they brought out Barack. Um, let's, uh, let's put up uh, uh, the photograph of Robert Maxwell. This is uh, number 19 uh, on our list of, of photos. Okay, so there's Robert Maxwell. Okay, so this is where I want to bring you in before we go into Robert Maxwell. They're going to get straight into detail on him. I want to show you something from uh, Ben Swan. Okay. This is a video from RT America where they're discussing uh, Epstein and his connections with um, Robert Maxwell. So let's get into this one real quick here. So they got to be particularly worried today, right? This morning, too. And, and this is the other story getting a lot of traction today. I, is it possible that Epstein, because of the newly released information about him regarding his mysterious travels with a phony passport, as we reported here a couple of days ago, may have some type of intel ties to either our government or possibly another government seeking to blackmail the men who attended those parties. Those See what this is going to show, this is going to show how Michael Cohen already knew before he was before he took office that Robert Blackwell was Israeli intelligence. You know, let's watch. You know, supposed sex parties. Look, as conspiratorial as it sounds, given the nature and the reach of this story, 
the unexplainable details of his deal with the feds, uh, the stamps that were found on his passport, we, we determine that you deserve to at least hear the facts wherever they may lead. We are going to be joined shortly by our correspondent, Michelle Greenstein, and journalist Ben Swan. This is the news with Rick Sanchez, where we believe it's time to do news again. Jeffrey Epstein owns a private plane, a home in Paris, resources all over the world. There's much about him, though, that remains mysterious. But this we know. He can no longer slip through the cracks of justice without at least reporters knowing all about it. And he will have to get used to his jail cell because he won't be going home to his $77 million mansion, at least not anytime soon. That's new, right? We have team coverage of this story. News with Rick Sanchez special correspondent Michelle Greenstein joins us with the very latest developments. And RT contributor and veteran journalist Ben Swan is going to be joining us with his analysis. Uh, Michelle, let's uh, get started with you. Uh, take us through what happened today and what you have, uh, what else you have found out. Sure. Well, what happened today is essentially that he was denied bail by this federal judge. He requested the ability to await his trial at his Upper East Side mansion. The judge said, no, you're a danger to the safety of others, including your accusers or alleged victims and even some prospective victims. So he got a hard no on that. But in terms of what else we know, it's looking more and more every day as if this hedge fund mm. was actually a front for something else. As we know, this fund is offshore, right, at, in a tax haven yeah. at the U.S. Virgin Islands, which means he didn't have to report how much money was on the record. You don't have to report what kind of holdings you have, right? And another curious thing is that the only public client, the only person known to have been a client of this hedge fund is Leslie Wexner, a billionaire for sure, the CEO of Victoria's Secret, but no one else is known to have been a client of this hedge fund. So here's what an actual hedge fund manager, Doug Cass from Seabreeze, had to say about this. He found this quite curious. He said, I went to my institutional brokers, to their trading desks, and asked if they had ever traded with him. Not one institutional trading desk, primary or secondary, had ever traded with Epstein's firm. Let me stop you, because I want to be fair, and I suppose give Epstein the benefit of the doubt from a legal standpoint, right? Sure. Uh, is it possible that everyone's running from the ship because they're afraid to be associated with this big rat? Oh, I mean, that's definitely happening. I mean, you see that being covered in the corporate press nonstop. So, I mean, I mean with these traders who are saying, oh, I never right. did business with him. Oh, yeah, of course or, or people want to distance themselves. But in this case, this is, we're talking about an institutional uh, trading desk. They have no records of trading mm. with Epstein's firm. So, of course, on a personal level, you have, you know, some of his friends or so-called, you know, social acquaintances mm -hmm. distancing themselves in that way. But I think this is different. But this, this is, is a record. What you're describing right. is there's a record of him trading. At, well, there's no record. But exactly. They're not, but they're finding no record. Exactly. Uh, Which is why many are saying that this may have been a front for some sort of blackmailing operation. Even one of Epstein's alleged victims, uh, Victoria Jeffrey, one of his accusers, said this. She said, he got girls for Epstein's friends and acquaintances. Epstein specifically told me that the reason for him doing this was that so they would, quote, owe him, and he would, quote, have something on them. So this is leading some to speculate mm -hmm. that he may have been part of some bigger intelligence operation. It's possible that he's just a very sick individual, right? And for right. some reason, enjoyed watching other men abuse children. Or both. That's of course both. possible. He right. could be a sick individual who was used per perhaps by either foreign, uh, as a foreign asset. That's a good point. Or, 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 or CIA asset. That's a good point. Know, but right? it does stink of a more professional blackmailing operation when you talk about how big this thing really was. And let's bring it back to that controversial plea deal, right, from yeah. Alex Acosta, who uh, was the U.S. attorney for uh, the Southern District of Florida at the time, who, as we know, resigned Friday. He said, even he himself said, I was told Epstein, quote, belonged to intelligence uh -huh. and to leave it alone. So this has led some to question, okay, intelligence asset for who? So let me take you to Robert. Can I just stop you for a minute and challenge you on that one? I don't Absolutely. believe anything Alex Acosta says because he's going to say whatever he has to to save his ass. And you certainly, you know, are justified in doing that, of course. But this isn't him. This doesn't make him look good in any way. You don't right. understand what I'm saying? So that it comes from him, I, th I find significant. So let me take you to Robert Steele, who's a former CIA and military intelligence officer. Okay. This is his statement. He says, I remain of the view that Jeffrey Epstein is a Mossad clandestine clandestine operations officer, assisted by Mossad clandestine operations officer Ghislaine Maxwell, and that their mission mm. is to do precisely what they have been doing, entrap U.S. politicians, judges, celebrities, prosecutors, 
and corporate leaders. And most governments will do this if they could. It just so happens the Israelis are really good at it. Right. I mean, what could be a better asset than someone who has all this dirt, right? This quote-unquote blackmail on a lot of powerful players. And even Philip Giraldi, who's also a former CIA and military intelligence officer, said this. He said, here is how it would have gone if it were true. Mossad would have exploited Epstein's contacts, arranging their cooperation by having Epstein whining and dining them while flying them off to exotic locations, providing them with women and entertainment. Mm -hmm. If they refused to cooperate, it'd be time for blackmail, photos and videos of sex with underage women. So the idea would be that any powerful man, be he tycoon, prime minister, <coughs> prince, or former president or present president, if somebody was to say to them, I have video of you with a 14-year-old girl. You do whatever they wanted. You right? own them. Right. They are in now theory. officially owned in theory. And this is the concern in a case like this because it involves so many. Stay where you are. Let, let, yeah, let, let, let's bring in, uh, let's bring in uh, Ben uh, Swan. Ben, uh, you've been listening to the conversation. What say with you? Yep. Well, first of all, you guys are touching on some really important points, but a couple of other things to add to this conversation um, is simply this. Uh, you, number one, you mentioned about uh, Alexander Acosta and saying you don't believe what he's saying, so try to save his, his butt. Right. I agree with you, but the statement he made about Epstein being intelligence was actually not made when the heat was on him. Mm -hmm. It was actually made prior to his confirmation hearing to become labor secretary. He was asked in, the, in an interview um, by the Trump administration when they were vetting him, huh. saying, is this whole Epstein thing going to cause us problems? He said, it's not going to cause us problems because I was told to back off that Epstein was above my pay grade and that he's some sort of intelligence. Great point. So it wasn't when he was under the seat. That's important. Second thing. See, Cohen already knew that Epstein was part of an intelligence operation. So that's important to understand. Let's finish this out and then we'll get back to the back, to digging into the background of the rest of the actors here. Is this, you know, this Maxwell connection is mm. kind of shocking. Um, if you really take a look at, at what's going on with it, Robert Maxwell, the billionaire from the UK who mm -hmm. owned uh, a newspaper empire there, there have been allegations and claims for many years. He died in 1991, by the way, in a completely bizarre way. He was standing naked on his yacht named after his daughter and then jumped in or fell into the ocean near the Canary Islands and either drowned or had a heart attack and, and there isn't even a, a clear cause of death for him. The claims have been made over the years that he was Mossad. In fact, the British Foreign Office believed that he was absolutely a double agent and they believed that he was Mossad. Mm -hmm. So if he was Mossad, possibly, um, it's also possible that his daughter is connected to Mossad and that's how she's connected to Epstein because the two have been together for years but don't seem to have any relationship other than her being his fixer, Did which is a very strange relationship for the daughter of a billionaire to, to, to take. Adding something to what you're talking about right now, Michelle had mentioned to me Maxwell was essentially his only partner, client. Right, so the daughter of Robert Maxwell, Jelaine Maxwell, pretty much acted as this recruiter and even sometimes a participant in this sexual abuse. But I think Ben is absolutely hitting the nail on the head. We have this uh, father of his partner in crime with very strong ties to Mossad, who's been accused of being an Israeli agent by many journalists, including Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hirsch. And in a book called uh, Robert Maxwell, Israel's Super Spy, that actually really details both his life and death, a very strong case is made. Uh, for the fact that he was actually assassinated by the Mossad after he became a liability. All right, let me push back on both of you here a little bit. Could it be that Maxwell just happened to be one of his many clients, as, you know, can happen in most cases? Are you talking about the daughter? So I'm be talking about... Uh, both the daughter and Maxwell, whoever it was that he's being tied to. No, because uh, so, Maxwell, okay, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, sorry. To you. Oh, no, no, I, I was going to say, so Robert Maxwell was was not a client in any way. But here's something interesting, Rick, That because I know you how you like to go down this rabbit hole, right? Mm -hmm. uh, think about this. Robert Maxwell, after he died, he is he is a British citizen, was given a state funeral in Israel. The prime minister got up and said that he had done much more for Israel than anyone could ever know this day during his eulogy. So Robert Maxwell was it was clearly tied in ways to the state of Israel that go far beyond what the average person would be, in, even the average billionaire. He was connected very, very heavily to that. As for his daughter, um, in terms of her involvement, again, her relationship to Epstein is so important because... Again, the, here's a woman who seems to go around and recruit these girls for him and gets nothing out of it. 
other than to be like kind of his partner in crime. And then last thing I'd say about this, the black book that he, Epstein has, has the names of so many, and not just in the United States, we're talking about US politicians, we're talking about, again, his relationship with people like Prince Andrew, the king um, of, of Saudi Arabia, King Ben Salman, is in that book. So he's connected to people all over oh, the no, world. Oh, no, listen. And people I, I, with I, whom I, the Israelis would want I, to connect. I read the New York. Okay, I'm going to show you something here <clears throat> that comes out of Epstein's Black Book that also plays into these connections. I found <clears throat> within the Black Book connections to Trump. And let's see here. There we go. So the Trump family shows up in Black, Epstein's Black Book no less than four times. You have the uh, the Trump Robert Blaine, which is the Trump Management Incorporated company. Again, you have Trump, Trump Blaine and Robert, <clears throat> probably either another satellite office or it, it may be some 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 sort of personal connection number. I'm not sure. It's it's they're both in New York. <clears throat> then we have Ivana Trump. Why is Ivana Trump in, in Epstein's Black Book? Ivanka Trump. Why is her number, why is her contact information in Epstein's Black Book? If this isn't related to Donald Trump, then why in the world does Epstein have their numbers? I mean, think about it. All right, let's get back to the RT story and then we'll get back into uh, the back. Today, Gabe Sherman's piece, I saw some of the new names that are out there. Uh, we are out of time. Wish we could go, but I'm just going to ask you <coughs> yes or no. Michelle first. Is he going to sing? No. Ben, if he sings, uh, I don't think they give him time to. He'll also fall off a boat someplace. Wow. Mm -hmm. My thanks to both of you. Good segment. Thanks, Ben. Okay, so let's get back to the investigation with True News. Uh, publisher extremely wealthy businessman died in mysterious uh, circumstances fell off of his yacht naked naked yes um and drowned and uh and had a heart attack and had a heart attack yes. which came first yeah, we don't know standing on the yacht rail naked and you have a heart attack fall over or did you have a heart attack after you <laughs> drowned after somebody knocked you off the rail all right so robert maxwell uh, is believed to be a uh, Israeli Mossad spy. I suggest you read um, Gideon Spies. Gideon Spies by uh, the late Gordon Thomas. Uh, I interviewed him many times. And I, I, I guess, Doc, maybe we should go and bring back the uh, interview I did with Gordon Thomas. We should just put it up on the website as audio. It's done many, many years ago. Gordon Thomas passed away. I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. And, uh, but he, uh, Gordon Thomas, was convinced that Robert <clears throat> Maxwell was an Israeli Mossad spy. He provided a great deal of evidence to it. I mean, it, it was a compelling read. Uh, Maxwell owned a, a publishing house, a, a several, several uh, some prominent, well known publications. The British Printing Corporation, Sinclair Research. Mac uh, Million Publishers and the Mirror Group Newspapers, which owns the Daily Mirror. Macmillan Publishing at one time was the largest producer of textbooks for schools in the U.S. at one time. That's right. And so he owned it. That's right. How about that? Get uh, propaganda in the school textbooks. Yes. So. And uh, Mr. Maxwell has uh, his own uh, long history with Israel, going back to the, uh, the 1948 war. Uh, it's, it's been considered to be a fact at this point. The Mac Let's just look at that real quick. The Macmillan Publishing House they were putting textbooks in schools and that was controlled also by Israeli Mossad assets. So when they talk about indoctrination in our schools, I mean, you can see Mossad is pretty deep in America and controlling America. So anyway, that's just a little footnote here. Let's go back to this. So I hope provide smuggle in through an operation for air parts to the Israeli Air Force, <clears throat> allowing them to maintain air supremacy during the Arab-Israeli war in 1948. And uh, as you noted, um, uh, Gordon Thomas, he, he took this, uh, I'd say, much further than anyone else has taken the story of Maxwell. So much so that it wasn't simply that Mr. Maxwell, you believe Mr. Maxwell was more than simply an agent for the Mossad, was actually was uh, involved actively in potentially launching a coup in Russia to put the KGB chief in and uh, topple the current uh, uh, pr uh, prime minister at the time, which was Mikhail Gorbachev. 
And uh, you look. Well, he at, wasn't prime minister. He was president, the president. The president, right? yeah, the president of uh, of the of, of the Soviet Union at the time. But the the crazy thing with uh, Mr. Maxwell, especially in regard to uh, what Gordon Thomas has said, is it wasn't. Gordon Thomas doesn't believe it was an accidental death. Gordon Thomas believes that Mossad killed Mr. Maxwell because... Their own agent. Their own agent, because there are two things. He was planning to double-cross the Mossad, uh, potentially sell out information, set up his own shop, let's say, with the blackmailing information that he was generating. But uh, two, that he was uh, basically acting rogue uh, in regard to this coup and other operations. Well, and, there was another factor involved with that, too. He was hundreds of millions of dollars in debt and was actually so 400 million and was wanting to use his knowledge and information that he had in order for someone to pay off basically pay off that debt and so he was using that as an opportunity I've got information I need cash so a businessman who's deep in debt and facing bankruptcy is prime a prime candidate to be entrapped in an espionage uh, network yes now that could fit a lot of people, right? Uh, when you you owe four hundred million dollars, and I, I've read desperate. it could be into the billions. Yes. Uh, when the actual bankruptcy took place, when, when Maxwell, uh, Mr. Maxwell, died, every part of his <coughs> empire fell apart, and uh, just only his brother was holding a loan four hundred million. It could be upwards of a couple billion, if not. I saw one figure four hundred billion uh, as as one of the numbers presented uh, of the debts he owed across forty three different banks. Okay, so we're talking about Robert Maxwell, and there's a reason for it. As we've established, he was a, a, a Mossad spy for Israel. Number two, he had a daughter who is still alive. And Ghislaine that was Maxwell. Ghislaine? Is that is pronounced Ghislaine? Ghislaine Maxwell. Ghislaine Maxwell. And so you need to know these two names, uh, Robert Maxwell and Ghislaine Maxwell, because... Personally, I'm convinced that Ghislaine Maxwell is Jeffrey Epstein's handler for the Israeli Mossad. I don't believe she works for him. He works for her. I, I think Jeffrey Epstein was recruited and given a position, pretend to be a billionaire. Mm. Jeffrey Epstein has never been a billionaire. He's never made any business deals himself. He was allowed to pretend to be a billionaire and his job was to to entrap influential Americans and Brits and others around the world, entrap them in sex scandals with underage teenage girls so that they could be blackmailed. So his job was uh, pretend to be a billionaire and entrap influential people. His salary was unlimited access to teenage girls. And he got to use all of the company uh, benefits, all right, the mansions, the jets, cars. He could pretend to be a billionaire. Everybody thought he was a billionaire. So you see right there, see that this is why when you see Trump distancing himself from Epstein, um, it's probably because Trump is deep in inside of this operation and they've got blackmail on Trump. I think Trump is scared... To the bone because he doesn't want to be implicated in this um because it'll bring him down too so and he you know he needs the 2020 election they still have to to battle with public opinion in this situation it's not like they're all powerful that the our opinion and what we say and how much noise we make affects their operations so just keep that in mind okay but he knew he's not a billionaire he's just he's he's working for the company who's the company Zionism, Israel, Mossad. What's the plan? Entrap influential Americans and others in Great Britain and Europe. So we have Ghislaine, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell, the well, daughter. That name Ghislaine means an offering or a sacrifice. Yes, it means a sacrifice, a pledge, actually, a pledge. a pledge. It means a pledge. So Robert Maxwell named his daughter pledge mm -hmm. that's an unusual thing why would you give your daughter the name pledge what did you pledge you pledged your daughter so his his yacht was named lady galane yes that's right another pledge All right 
So I, we're setting this up for you because we showed you this photograph uh, a few days ago, and and I want to go to uh, still number 21. And this is Lady Gethlane. Gethlane, I got to say it the way it is. Uh, oh, to be fair, not the way it's spelled. Media. is saying Gethlane. Gethlane. But Gethlane. Gethlane. when I listen Gethlane. to her interview, uh, she <clears throat> says her name is Gethlane. Gethlane. So there is Lady Ghislaine Yacht, named for Robert Maxwell's daughter, Ghislaine, his youngest daughter. So, so this is very important you follow these connections. Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell, Lady Ghislaine. This is the yacht that Robert Maxwell <coughs> fell off of naked and drowned, which Gordon Thomas said he was executed by Mossad, although he was working for Mossad. You see, that's a dangerous job. Right. When you work for a spy agency, you most likely will have a tragic death. Because at some point you know too much. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. That's right. So, where are we going with this? Because this starts to become um, really uh, troubling for the Trump campaign. We're going to go to... I guess um, a good question would be, where is this yacht now? Who has this yacht I today? don't know. Who does? Well, it's actually owned uh, currently by Saudi Arabian lawyer Dr. Al Kui. And uh, this is the first of many Saudi connections in the right. Epstein uh, let's, scandal. Yeah, yeah, let's hold on to this. Let's, let's save this for... I want to walk people through this because this is mind-boggling. Okay, We'll save this for a little bit later in the program. Uh, so let's, let's look at the photograph. This would be... Um, Where's the photograph of the... Talking about the uh, uh, photograph of President Trump and yes. Robert Maxwell. Uh, that's uh, number 25 for control. All right. And this, uh, we actually showed this yesterday as well. Yes. So, yeah, we, and so we were uh, blown away by this the other day. I guess uh, we showed it Friday. last week, didn't we? Last Friday. Friday. So Robert Maxwell, wealthy publisher from London, Israeli spy standing on the right. The next man to his left is CBS newsman Mike Wallace, who is Jewish. Then in the center, the small, short man is former Senator John Tower of Texas, who Gordon Thomas told me used his position as chairman of the uh, a Senate, I guess it was the Foreign Affairs or Intelligence Committee, um, he used his position in the Senate to get Israeli spies into American nuclear uh, research facilities. Los Alamos. Los Alamos, specifically, yes. And uh, um, I have a little bit of a bio on him, but I can wait on... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, go so, ahead. specific, so looking into this, specifically, uh, Senator John Tower, uh, he took over... Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson Senate seat. Let's go back. Just keep the let's just keep the photograph up there, okay. so we can just keep. Yeah, so let's keep the photo on it. And uh, replaced LBJ. No, replaced who, LBJ. Who is the one responsible for the USS Liberty? That's correct. Which was a Israeli false flag operation to start a war against the Arabs. That's correct. And then after leaving, I remember <clears throat> in the JFK investigation, LBJ is also most likely the person behind the assassination of JFK, who came out and spoke out against these secret societies. The very word secrecy is repugnant. Remember that. So, and if, and if you're as old as I am, you remember Mike Wallace presenting the news on TV. There is so much indoctrination coming out of all of these Israeli Mossad connections that span decades of our lives. You know, it just... It boggles the mind, and, and now it's all coming out. It's crazy. I don't know why it's all coming out now. Who knows? But it's all coming out. So, I mean, that's interesting in itself. Let's get back to this. In office, uh, Senator Tower led the Tower Commission, which investigated the Iran-Contra affair, and published a report which was, though it was highly critical of the Reagan administration, it didn't really look into much of the actual allegations to mm -hmm. smuggling, uh, illicit relations with foreign nations. It was a sort of, uh, I'd say, a rubber stamp on the uh, investigation. You leave it alone, leave the, uh, especially the players, out of jail, uh, including to, uh, the Reagan administration. Uh, now, Mr. Uh, no, Senator Towers, uh, he supported Gerald Ford rather than Ronald Reagan 
in uh, the nice Freemason. Yes. yes. And was, uh, was for legalized abortion. He was against the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights uh, Act of 1965. He also opposed President Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative, uh, the, the Star Wars program, mm -hmm. which actually has led up to the current issue we have uh, with stand-up with ballistic missiles with Russia. Um, after leaving Congress... Yes, maybe it was a set of defense... The armed service. It was it armed, make sense. He armed, was armed services. services. He was the chairman of the Armed Services Committee. That's correct. And, and after leaving Congress, he served as the chief negotiator because of that experience on the Senate Armed Services Committee for the strategic arms reduction talks with the Soviets. So he had a tie with the Soviets, had enough of a rapport that he could be used out of did office. Did he die in a private plane crash? He sure did. And I, I, I'll just yeah. mention this now. Was he Senator, naked when the plane crashed? Well, I'm not sure if he was naked, but he definitely was burned alive. And uh, right. Senator Tower died in 1991 mm -hmm. in uh, Atlantic Southeast Airlines Flight 2311 crash in Brunswick, Georgia. Now, this was caused by a, quote, failure of the plane's propeller control unit. This is according to the official investigation. But it was a very odd uh, incident, uh, especially in the 90s when plane safety was uh, mm -hmm. at, at its highlight. I mean, yes. the fact that this, uh, this, uh, this accident occurred. But the year is going to be very important moving forward the rest of the show. 1991 is when Senator Towers uh, passed away. The, the last uh, part uh, of interest here is that Senator Towers was, uh, was put up to be uh, George H.W. Uh, Bush's um, defense secretary. Mm -hmm. He couldn't make it through the Senate confirmation hearing, and it was an embarrassment. Yes, I've seen. he ended up after that because he couldn't become the defense. Secretary. Why? Why? Why did the Senate refuse to confirm him as Secretary of Defense? Some have said it was alcohol use, but that's just not really correct. It's not the full story. There was a lot of questions about the background for Senator Tower, especially in regard to the, uh, the uh, actions he took during uh, the uh, Iran-Contra era. And as you already noticed there, I mentioned rather, the, uh, the maybe his use as part of what we're now uncovering as a major international Mossad spy ring. That's right. That's right. They, they used alcohol, that he was a closet alcoholic, as the reason to deny him confirmation as Secretary of Defense. But... A lot of people s speculated it was because he had he had questionable loyalty to the United States that he perhaps had been recruited by a foreign power. Well, the only foreign power that he's knowingly helped was Israel. Right. Now, the, the the guy on on the far left, Steve Ross. Who is Steve Ross? Oh, excuse me. What? That, 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 beside John Tower is Donald Trump. Right? Yes. So we there is. Donald J. Trump, pictured with Robert Maxwell, Israeli spy, Mike Wallace, uh, CBS uh, anchorman, uh, John Tower, known to assist Israeli Mossad spies get into Los Alamos. And then we have Donald Trump, and then the man to the far left, next standing next to Donald Trump, is Steve Ross. Who is Steve Ross? Well, so he is the, uh, or was, rather, the CEO of Time Warner. Now, uh, the little background on Steve Ross, he was born Stephen J. Recknitz, uh, son of Jewish immigrants to Brooklyn. He changed his name? Changed his name. And we're seeing this again to be Why a Why do they do this so often? Uh, and, and I can only speculate, maybe it's like what my family had to do. Uh, original last name was uh, Zelensky. But they, when they immigrated to England to fit in, they changed the name uh, to Zal. But I, I don't know if that's the case in here, but I've seen a lot of this investigation. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the individuals... Hey, my, my name is German. It's Vilas. Yes. It's not Wiles. It's Vilas. But when they, when, they got, when they got to America, people looked at the spelling because Germans pronounce W as a V. Right. All right? And so the Americans, speaking American, said... They said Wiles, but the name is Vilas. Right. And we right. Know, names mean things, especially in politics. I mean, there's a reason why uh, Yael Kushner is not... Going by Yellow Kushner, she's still calling herself Ivanka Trump publicly. Yes. His names mean things. Yes. But my family didn't change their name. Mm. It was just mispronounced. It was mispronounced. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. change for you. But these guys changed their names. They did right. change dis names. to disguise their identity. Right. So uh, he, his history actually dates back to 1953. He married uh, Carol Rosenthal. And she was the daughter. Change their names to disguise their identity. Who does that? Who do we know that does the Khazarian Jews? So, side note. Anyway, back to this. Burr of a Manhattan funeral homeowner, Edward Rosenthal, who operated the largest funeral company in the United States. It was called Riverside Memorial Chapel. 
uh, this is where they accepted employment as a, a funeral director. This is Steve Ross's mm -hmm. first job, the future CEO of Time Warner. Why this is important is um, that through... You started out burying people? Started by burying people, which some might say is ironic that it's tied into this, uh, this situation uh, where many have died in mysterious circumstances. I'm sure this scandal alone has buried many. But the, so he's the founder of... He's the founder of Time Warner? Yes, he's the founder and the CEO of Time Warner. Okay, so any, any suspicious um, information about the early days of Time Warner? So the, it's, uh, the money that went into Time Warner is of interest. And uh, it, there's a tie-in to two uh, crime dons, as this is how they're referred to uh, by uh, Connie Brock in her book, Master of Game, Steve Ross and the Creation of Time Warner. Now, she referred to them as Mafia Dons. Uh, the two names are Manny Kimmel and Abner Zwoman. Uh, these aren't Italian names. They're not. It's, it's, a, it's Jewish, a Russian. Jewish Mafia. Jewish, right. It's, it's, okay. it's fair to assume Jewish Mafia. But uh, these two, uh, they actually worked. They came into a, a partnership with Steve Ross early, and uh, they, uh, they created a, uh, a parking company called Kinney Parking Company. Kinney? Kinney. Kinney Parking Company. And uh, they were being monitored by the FBI at the time. The FBI didn't really intervene, and this business eventually turned into... But they, the FBI was watching them? That's correct, according the to... The founders, the, the, uh, the people that provided the seed capital money for Time Warner. That's they correct. were being watched by the FBI. That's correct. And, and this to this day, no one knows that about Time Warner, that the, the their beginnings were both humble and under investigation by J. Edgar Hoover. The, uh, the tie-in to uh, the, the onset of Time Warner is... Kinney Parking Company uh, came out and became Kinney National Services. It was taken public in 1962. And uh, part of this is uh, Kinney, referring it back to uh, the, the uh, basically the company, paid $40 million for uh, Warner Brothers. And that is actually how they became the mega company in 1971. Now, this all came from the, two, the company that Manny Kimmel and Abner Zwillman helped Steve Ross start. That's an interesting that's right, history that I never knew. All right, so that's, that's the man standing next to Donald Trump. And what year was that photograph? Uh, that photograph is 1989. 1989, and, and we know and the exact the, date. Is that the photograph that was found here in, in Florida in um, like a thrift shop? Thrift shop? Yes, yeah, so the Palm Beach thrift shop. That's the photo we shown Friday. We didn't know all the players in this, but since... Friday, I've been stuck on this, trying to figure out all the players in the photo and try to find anything else, because it seemingly is a very important photo, especially the fact that you have both the current president and Robert Maxwell, which across many circles, including the research by Gordon Thomas, was a Mossad agent. Now, that's important to note. Now, Trump ran on the premise that he was an outsider, and he was a billionaire and couldn't be bought, and yet... What do we have here? We have Trump connected long ago to Robert Maxwell, who we know now is a Mossad agent, connected to Jeffrey Epstein. Let's just take a look here real quick at Trump at a party with Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, if this doesn't say, hey, we're best buds, you know, nothing does. Um, it's, it's, this is crazy. Let's take a look at this here. Um, now, this first person that is introduced at the door, who is this? I think this is one of Epstein's girls who procures other girls for Epstein. Okay, here we go. There's Epstein. An invitation into Donald Trump's world. Footage from 1992. BBC archives shows the future president welcoming Jeffrey Epstein to his Mar-a-Lago estate. So the get-together more than a decade before right Epstein pleaded guilty Epstein to prostitution charges in Florida. Both men are seen enjoying themselves. Elaine Trump Maxwell. pointing out women dancing in front of them. Nobody knows who that guy is. An apparently friendly encounter with a man that... Nobody knows who this guy is yet, so we're, that's, that's still coming up. Um, I think we'll probably figure out who this guy is later. He may prove to be somebody important. Anyway, there's Ghislaine Maxwell right there. Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, there were best buds way back then. Come on. He can't say that he doesn't 
have any connections to, to Epstein. Trump is lying, so. The president is now looking to distance himself from. Well, I knew him like everybody in Palm Beach knew him. I had a falling out with him a long time ago. I don't think I've spoken to him for 15 years. Uh, I wasn't a fan. Epstein, who has pleaded not guilty to federal sex trafficking and conspiracy charges in New York, is fighting to be released from jail while he waits for his trial. His lawyer is now offering an explanation for the most mysterious item uncovered in a search of Epstein's Manhattan mansion. An expired foreign passport revealed by prosecutors as they tried to convince a judge that Epstein is a serious flight risk. The passport appearing to show Epstein's photo, but under a different name. His residence listed as Saudi Arabia. Epstein's attorneys describing him as an affluent member of the Jewish faith now say he acquired the document from Austria in the 1980s for personal protection while traveling in the Middle East, adding it was only to be presented to potential kidnappers, hijackers, <coughs> or terrorists should violent episodes occur. The explanation coming as one of Epstein's accusers called on other alleged victims to tell their stories. If you have already made the decision to come forward, thank you. If you have not, the time is now. Courtney Wilde first told authorities Epstein sexually abused her more than a decade ago and says she was kept in the dark about the secret deal he cut with federal prosecutors in Florida in 2007. My voice was muted by the same government that was supposed to protect me. Law enforcement officials across the country now working together as more women speak up, saying they too were victimized by Epstein. So isn't that interesting? I mean, there is so much collusion from Israel. Not Russia, but Israel. <laughs> the Epstein case goes deep. It has long and far-reaching tentacles, and Donald Trump cannot deny his involvement in this. Now, I don't get happy or giddy about that. I'm just trying to show you that Donald Trump is not the saint that he pretends to be. All right, let's get back to this uh, investigation. I have to ask this question, Edward, because there might be people in the audience asking this. How did you? How do you know that that photograph was taken in May of 1989? How do you know that? Well, the uh, first uh, what I was doing before even finding uh, an article on this was I, I was trying to look at the original photos of Senator Tower and um, Steve Ross. So photos from the time. And I was able to date it through that process to between 1987 to 1989. Then, uh, this morning, I came across uh, the May 17th edition of the 1989 uh, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. This is a Wednesday. And uh, this edition noted that Robert Maxwell had a party on his yacht. We have this right here to show up on screen. This is a party. This, is, this was in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, May 17th, 1989. See on the right there? On their toes. Robert Maxwell. Well, see, this article detailed a special party that Maxwell's holding on his yacht. And it's important that Maxwell's holding parties because part of what Gordon Thomas said about Maxwell was that the deal the Mossad and even Russian intelligence had is that the yacht would be the place of business, the place where Maxwell would bring powerful figures to be entrapped, to be looked at, to listen to, and even to be uh, shared and uh, brought into ongoing operations. Well, here is a party that occurred on that very yacht. Now, the uh, St. Louis post Dispatch noted a couple of uh, guests specifically said that every guest there was handpicked by Robert Maxwell himself. They included Donald Trump, his wife Ivana, former Texas Senator Tower, SX Secretary John Lehman, Ghislaine Maxwell, lawyer Tom Boland, literary agent Mort Jankla, UN Envoy Thomas Pickering, New York Post owner Peter Kalakow, and Robert Maxwell's niece, Helen Atkin of Maximilian Publishing. Now, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch uh, insisted that every guest, and this is an order from uh, Robert Maxwell himself, insisted that every guest take their shoes off before going on the yacht. Now, that face value, that just seems like uh, just uh, he wanted to keep a, a tidy boat. He wanted to keep uh, the, the plush carpet clean. But let's go back. We know that this boat was being used potentially as a honeypot yacht. So all those rich and powerful influential people were told when you come on this yacht no shoes you got no shoes and then president trump wrote an article you're telling a billionaire to take off his shoes yeah a piece of clothing that will after the yacht leave a piece of something an item that an individual owns that will leave with them after the yacht party so what could 
All right, other than he was a clean, a clean, freak. A clean freak and, and wanted to keep his yacht looking nice. All right, which I could I could get that. Okay, take off your shoes. All right, I just had the just had the yacht remodeled. All right, you know I could buy this story, but how could you use that line for a nefarious purpose? Well, this would have given uh, Maxwell a unique opportunity to, let's say, plant or or swamp for. They could plant a listening device, swamp for potential DNA, any kind of skin, uh, sweat even, that is in the shoe, both to determine health, but also uh, you know, genetic makeup, and all these things which could be used by an intelligence agency. Well, if you wanted to make somebody sick and you had their DNA. Right. Uh, you'd, you'd, you'd have make a powerful. turn-based weapon. Right. Just like we had in the headlines about the, uh, the CIA, uh, their potential involvement in uh, uh, ticks, uh, basically uh, carrying uh, the the, uh, d the Dearborn disease, That's right? The Lyme disease. Okay, so yeah, d the Dearborn disease, That's right? The Lyme disease. Okay, so um, the yacht that President Trump was on, 1989, was the Lady Ghislaine. Uh, the name for the daughter of Robert Maxwell and Ghislaine Maxwell was on that boat at that time. at that time with Donald Trump, right? Right, and Lady Ghislaine. I know that's the yacht. Um, uh, um, uh, Ghislaine uh, Maxwell is uh, in the center of the Epstein sex scandal today. And people think that she's an employee, but I'm telling you, folks, it's, it's the other way around. Yeah. All right. Epstein is the employee. Yeah, and what's telling you about it? She's the handler. So direct proof for that is that Ghislaine doesn't actually stay with Mr. Epstein. She owns her own apartment within a couple blocks of Mr. Epstein's New York mansion. But she has stayed in her own, uh, as a group, her own uh, property, her own She's schedule. there when the teenage girls are brought in. That's right. And manages them, according she to man lawsuits she manages which them. against Mr. Epstein okay. and Alan Dershowitz. Uh, she's, she's up to her eyeballs in this sex scandal with these teenage girls. Written She's got to go to prison with Epstein. I read an article yesterday that after Robert Maxwell's passing, Ghislaine Maxwell became like a socialite in London, you know. Uh, and, and in kind of a weird way, she became like a high-profile socialite because her dad was in que had questionable connections, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I, you know, I read one article in particular from that particular time that talked about uh, some goofy guy that would hang out with her all the time. That goofy guy was none other than Jeffrey Epstein. And so this relationship uh, started picking up sometime after the passing of Robert Maxwell. And you begin to see, and once again, we're putting the proposal out there. It wasn't that Ghislaine Maxwell worked for Jeffrey Epstein, but that Ghislaine Maxwell is the handler for Jeffrey Epstein. And it's curious, uh, you know, we have not heard much from Ghislaine Maxwell in the past couple weeks. Where is she? That's a good question. She hasn't been brought in. Uh, last report says she has been seen uh, in Atlanta, from my understanding, uh, that she was potentially in Paris with Mr. Epstein. But these are all, uh, these are all uh, speculations because there hasn't been any formal arraignment. She has not been named as a conspirator, for example, in the Epstein. Yeah, and isn't that peculiar? Yes. They're going to they're gonna let her... They're going to let her walk. Doc, you told me some things about her today, some of, some of her, uh, her interesting skills. Right. She is a licensed pilot, not a Cessna, a jet. She can fly a jet. So could she fly the Lolita Express? She That's probably right. did fly the Lolita she, Express. She's licensed, qualified to fly it? Yes. For that, for that class of aircraft, yes. Yes, she is. She's also a helicopter pilot. She's also one of the few women in the world that are that is licensed on several different classes of submersibles or submarines. A this submarine? Is, yeah. So she's you have to have a license, I guess, to drive a submarine. You can't just you know take a driving course or something. You have to be licensed to drive a submarine. Lady Galen. I mean, Galen Maxwell is 007. <laughs> yes. No. Literally. She's. This is a spy. This is a James Bond spy. She drives submersible submarines. She flies helicopters, jets, helicopters. And none of them, the photo that we showed you, there is real no connection into Jeffrey Epstein's sphere or even hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein before 
after her, her father's passing. She was reportedly at that party in 1989, but she had, didn't really start hanging out, wasn't seen publicly with Jeffrey Epstein until 1992. And it was Jeffrey Epstein being seen with her. She yes. was the higher profile person there. In fact, uh, the London press was like, who is this guy? You know, uh, who's, who's this hanging out with Ghislaine Maxwell? And then she made the transition to the U.S. later. Then, you know, we saw the photograph the other day of um, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell in the background at Chelsea Clinton's wedding. That's yes. right. As Bill Clinton's walking Chelsea down the aisle, there's Ghislaine Maxwell. There it is, right there. There's the other photo there's is Prince Andrew. Andrew. Prince Andrew with uh, Victor uh, Virginia Roberts, rather, one of the primary the rape victims. The rape victims. Who are alleged there, rape there it, standing to the right is Robert Maxwell's daughter, Ghislaine Maxwell, who may very well possibly be a Mossad spy. She drives a submarine, she flies a jet, she flies a helicopter, she manages an international sex trafficking operation, she handles Jeffrey Epstein. This woman is 007 for the Israeli Mossad. And the, the young lady in the center is one of the teenagers. Virginia Roberts. She's not a teenager there, but she was a 13, 14 years old when, when she was recruited and brought into the operation. Right. And she, she eventually was, became like a lieutenant in the source. She was helping to recruit other yes. young girls into this uh, sorbid operation. Um, this, this is getting deeper. Where is the Lady Ghislaine yacht? The Lady Ghislaine yacht right now is owned by Saudi Arabian lawyer Dr. Al Curley. So it, it, after uh, Mr. Axel uh, died, uh, the yacht essentially was having, it would have to be sold off for assets um, to cover some of the debt that Mr. Maxwell left behind. Somehow, on a side note, Ghislaine Maxwell wasn't hit as heavily by the indebtedness of her father. It's important to know because she maintained wealth, even separate than Mr. Epstein. But it's in the hands of a Saudi Arabian lawyer named Dr. Al Cooley. Now, not much is known about Mr. Cooley, but he is reported to have paid at the time uh, nine million British pounds, uh, let's say roughly 17 to 18 million dollars for the yacht. Um, anything else that we need to cover on this one before we move to the second topic? Oh, did you want to bring up the other Saudi connections or save that maybe for another day? Uh, no, 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 let's, uh, you want to go into it right now? Let's, okay. Okay, so the, the Saudi connection to this, so we just mentioned the Saudi lawyer bought the boat, but that's not even the biggest Saudi connection here. There is a big-named arms dealer who had both a tie-in with Iran-Contra, uh, was the middleman, literally, between Oliver North, uh, Ronald Reagan's Oliver North, John and, Tower, and John yeah. Tower, and uh, Israel and, and Iran, uh, the center of this scandal. It just so happens he's found himself in the center of this scandal. So the, the man I'm talking about, and... and there's been so many connections that pop up on this that, we'll, just, well, first I'll introduce the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. So that article that I was able to confirm about the party just so happened to have a weird blurb off to the left of the same article. I'm going to show it on screen here. Yeah, I'm going to say, folks, get ready. Just hang on to your seat because you're not going to believe which the name is going to pop up on the screen connected to this Epstein sex scandal. Get ready. Go ahead and put it up on the screen. Adnan... Khashoggi, now, the, the uncle of Jamal Khashoggi. So this was on the same page of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that talked about the party that we had just talked about, right? That's yes. correct. And on it the same day, same page. And what is this story about? So this story was actually about uh, Mr. Uh, Khashoggi being dropped from the Board of Trustees at American University in Washington, D.C. Now, Rick, they, they named a gym after him after he donated $5 million in 1984. And uh, Jamal Khashoggi's uncle yes. is in the Epstein sex scandal story. This is so weird, folks. It's getting weirder. We're just starting on this. We're just scratching the surface of this thing. This is bigger than Pizzagate. People, everybody wanted a Pizzagate investigation. Folks, this is a hundred times bigger than that scandal. The, the, this could bring down the entire operation. Um, this is huge. Now, the, Mr. Uh, uh, Khashoggi has since passed away, but was, uh, and this is from the Independent London, a notorious, their wording, uh, but I won't say their wording, actually. Oh, no, say it, quote them. I mean, call, you know, they call him a whoremonger. 
They called him uh, the Bible word. International yeah. Longbird. He, the, the stereotype of Saudi royalty, billionaires, mind you, because he was a billionaire, coming into countries like the United States during the Super Bowl, for example, and trafficking girls, enjoying themselves, enjoying every uh, decadent things that the Romans and the Nero might have seen. That comes from... So he had a reputation. He was a Saudi whoremonger. Uh, yes, and a playboy. And, and the interesting part about this is that uh, the story uh, yesterday, Rick, that there was a foreign passport that Jeffrey Epstein had in his uh, vault. Saudi. Yeah, it was actually, no, an, actually Austrian, an Austrian. An Austrian passport with, with a Saudi it? residence. Yes. And everyone was wondering, why? How? First of all, you, to have a Saudi residence, you have to be sponsored in form either by the Saudi government or an individual. So is Jeffrey Epstein's Saudi residence also the residence of a Khashoggi? And uh, this isn't just true to say this. Vicky Ward of Kushner, Inc., has said this too, that really? the, the tie-in to uh, Epstein for uh, this case is Adan Khashoggi. And in addition to this, okay. I need to read her book. It's I very good. Read I, read, I read it from page to page. You do? Yes, I, I'll do it. Okay. No, I'll say the one thing I borrowed from. How does a simple hedge manager get a Saudi passport? Think about it. How many connections does this guy have to have in order to be granted a Saudi passport? They're going to go into this. Uh, Rick Wiles is going to outline the restrictive uh, requirements needed to get a, a Austrian passport. This is going to get interesting. Check this out. Let's get back. Are you? Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. I, what's my injury? <laughs> All right. But the thing with her though is that she has notably not included Bill Clinton or the Clintons in the book. And I've noticed that with the article she's publishing through the Daily Beast. That's just a side note. It completely ignores that aspect of the story. And it's a pivotal aspect of the story. But uh, Is Clinton connected to Khashoggi? Uh, from my understanding, reading through this, the connection to Bill Clinton is actually through President Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. It, it's not direct. And that's odd to think this, but the reason why this is a connection is how Bill Clinton may know uh, both Jamal, or especially Adan Khashoggi, is actually through his time he spent in the early 2000s hanging out with both President Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, the, the connection to President Trump through Adan Khashoggi, we actually we mentioned this in passing, I think, last year. Because there, there was a big, uh, big story for us that when Jamal Khashoggi died, we're trying to figure out why does this story matter? And, and how does this tie into Mohammed bin Salman? Well, it just so happens that in the late 80s, Donald J. Trump bought Adan Khashoggi's super yacht. Okay, so, you know, he's a billionaire, he can buy a yacht, what's the big deal? Well, he, he bought a yacht that was built at uh, about uh, $100 million by Adan Khashoggi. Okay. The market price today would be $304 million. President J. Trump got an extreme discount on this ship. So he paid, what, $90 million for it? Uh, about $29 million, according to reports. $29 million. He got it through the... President Trump did. President Trump did. And whose yacht did he buy? He, brought, he bought a Don Khashoggi. Oh, the article of Jamal Khashoggi. Folks, please do get your, wrap your brain around this. Donald Trump bought a yacht from Adnan Khashoggi, who is the uncle of Jamal Khashoggi, who was cut up with a bone saw by Bone Salmon. Right. Who Jeffrey Epstein had a framed photo of in his New York mansion. And Mohammed bin Salman is a, a sleepover buddy with Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner. What a sordid mess. And you're going to tell me that Donald Trump is innocent and doesn't know any of this stuff? Seriously? You're going to believe that? He paid, what, third, 29, 30, million. 30 million dollars? $100 million dollar or $100 million dollar or $100 million. That was a good buy. Oh, it was 29%. It on, was it on clearance? I mean, what, what was going on? Why was he able to buy a boat so cheap? I mean, he probably was uh, proud of that, wasn't he? Oh, he's very proud of it. These, these are two quotes from uh, President Trump, actually. One in 1988, after purchasing the boat. I just, I, Go ahead. What are the odds? <laughs> What are the odds that the current president of the United States bought a yacht from the uncle of the man who was murdered last year with a bone saw? It's insurmountable. I mean, and going back to that uh, photo, over 25 for control, that photo alone should have been the center. If we're going to do any investigation, any investigation, 
Let's find out what is up with that photo. So no one has ever identified all the people in this photo before. The entire Robert Mueller investigation was ludicrous. Right. Here is the collusion. There's the collusion. They're standing right there together. That's the collusion, but nobody will investigate it because it'll bring down the entire system. All right, so Donald Trump purchased... Think about that. This investigation alone could bring down the entire American system. Is that what Israeli intelligence wants? Doesn't Israeli intelligence, doesn't Israel want to take over the world? We could be looking at the fall of America right here. This could be why the Epstein scandal has come forward. So, I don't know, just keep that in mind. Khashoggi's yacht for $29, $30 million. <laughs> Great year was this? Uh, this would have been 1988, according to records. 1988. And this party... 1989. That was, on, that was on Maxwell's yacht. Maxwell's right. yacht. You got Khashoggi's yacht, Maxwell's yacht. Trump is involved in both of these yachts. And then this is, there's one other chapter, just a short chapter. This is that President Trump quickly sold the yacht. Oh, so he made a... Uh, he sold a Don. He flipped it. He flipped it. And I initially thought he'd made a, a, a profit on this. Actually, going back to records, he actually made a loss, a $9 million loss. He sold it for $20 million. To the, how, uh, how long did he keep it? He kept it about two years. And who did he sell it to? He sold it to none other than Saudi billionaire Al Walid bin Talal. Oh, oh no. no, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right, you, you can say it. Slap my papi. Slap my papi. Are pappy. you serious? Yes. And this is the man. This is the guy. All right. <laughs> Muhammad bin Salman hung this man upside down in the Ritz Carlton in December, November of 2018. And we. Think about that. This yacht alone possibly places Trump in the center of a money, money laundering operation. Come on. How can he be innocent of any of this? And we ago. speculated that his White House buddy, uh, uh, Kushner, was one that sold him out. And what the dossier of intelligence. Shared intelligence because Kushner had a clearance for intelligence on the orders of Donald Trump. Yeah, not on the orders of uh, Defense Secretary Mattis or John Kelly. Because yeah. Kushner didn't qualify for a top secret clearance. He was... He was denied clearance for some reason. Well, they said because he didn't disclose the Kushner Company activity in the West Bank and also in China. He physically didn't disclose things which wouldn't be a conflict and of so interest. Donald Trump ordered uh, the intelligence agencies to, to give top secret clearance to his son-in-law. Yes. All right. And so we speculated that Kushner then shared with, with uh, Mohammed bin Salman, his sleepover, his sleepover buddy, his pajama party buddy, shared with him top secret intelligence about Saudi officials such as the, uh, bin, uh, what's this, uh, Talal. Talal. Yes. And uh, the, they were being rounded up, hung upside down in the Ritz College and Hard Oh, ransom. Those are yes. that they have to pay billions of dollars, up to billions of dollars to get their freedom. Even sign off shares of Twitter, for example. Bin Talal had a, had a large stake in Twitter, which was reportedly signed over to the Saudi sorry, government. Sir, this is back this up. Just because I'm having trouble comprehending this. We're talking about the second yacht now. This is not this is not Robert Maxwell's yacht. Not this the Lady Ghislaine. Not the Lady Ghislaine. This is Adnan Khashoggi's yacht. Mm -hmm. Anand Khashoggi, uncle of Kamal Khashoggi, who Kamal was Khashoggi. who was butchered by Mohammed bin Salman using a bone saw in the Turkish uh, in the embassy. Turkish embassy. Uh, 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 Saudi, Saudi, embassy, in Saudi embassy in Turkey, and Adnan Khashoggi sold his yacht to Donald J. Trump, and Donald J. Trump sold the yacht to the prince right at, at, a loss. Loss. at a loss. At a loss. Now, why would you sell something like this, a luxury? See, this is the bigger picture. I know there are a lot of people going into the Epstein connections and blah, blah, blah. No one, besides True News, seems to be reporting on the fact that there are many connections to Donald J. Trump and the Israeli Mossad. So, that's something to keep in mind here. This is groundbreaking information. And 
this this should not be ignored. Asset at a loss, mind you, too. Money laundering. That's an interesting question. So is money laundering, money laundering going on? Would it be that a, a, a non Khashoggi originally built this for hundred million dollars, built this with arms smuggling money, maybe, or money he gathered through other various activities in the eighties, really to our contra or other things, like, especially uh, uh, with women. Sold it to President Trump, uh, Donald Trump at the time, to get $29 million of clean money, because it's coming from Donald Trump out of New York, who then sold it to back to the Saudis for $20 million. So you result with $20 million of completely cleaned money. This is something we've talked about with casinos. It's the same way casinos work. Well, it's just the fact that the, the connection between a lot of unsavory, crooked, slimy people. Yes. Does Donald Trump know anybody that's not slimy? Does he hang out with anybody that's morally virtuous? Does he have any pictures of Trump with a morally virtuous person? He's got Paula White to sit with him before. I said, are there any photos I've, of somebody with a morally virtuous guys to lead you into that one? So. All right. I'm serious, okay? Uh, Paula White said a couple of years ago that she and her, her second husband watch pornography together. All right, she's a pastor? Yeah, right. Okay. I'm not even going to go down that, that road. I've got two more topics I want to get to. We're already one hour, 11, 12 minutes. Uh, we're going to have to do five minutes each on this, guys. Okay. The next one is uh, President uh, Trump um, possibly could be implicated in international trafficking well, not international but interstate interstate. In interstate president trump could possibly be in legal trouble that he participated in the transportation of an underage girl on his jet yes that's correct and this would have been uh, actually we have the exact date friday 11 30 p.m april 15th year 2000 uh, President Trump, uh, according to a reporter he had with him, Michael uh, Corcoran, uh, he worked for Maxim, uh, Maximum Golf Magazine. So this is a sports magazine that we... Uh, Golfing magazine. magazine. Okay. He was doing uh, basically a profile on President Trump. Okay. Well, this, uh, this reporter at the time wrote down a couple guests that President Trump was having, this time he was Donald J. Trump, was having onto his jet and taking him from New York, LaGuardia, down to uh, Palm Beach, to the Mar-a-Lago. Now, the, the guests were, none other than... Jeffrey Epstein. Delane Epstein was flying on the Trump jet. On the Trump jet. And they were going from where to where? LaGuardia Airport, New York, to Palm Beach, Florida. Now, there were other guests on the plane, too. Yes, the report of the time didn't think much about it. He did at least write down a note about this extra guest. There was a, uh, a young girl, the ages, uh, according to the reporter, uh, between 15 and 20, was, was dressed up, had a lot of makeup on. And she accompanied uh, both Jeffrey and uh, Ghislaine onto President Trump's jet. Between the ages of 15 and 20, okay, that's a five-year span. Why did he think that she possibly was 15 years old? The way she was dressed, the makeup she was wearing, uh, and, and the size, actually, her size. Uh, the reporter hasn't, since even uh, this coming out, uh, being republished by uh, the Daily Intelligence of New York Magazine, hasn't expanded on this, really. But what he said is that he noted that girl was must have been the age between 15 and 20. And why that's important is we now have an example where it's not the Lolita Express, Jeffrey Epstein's plane. He had two of these, but Jeffrey Epstein's plane. We have an example where President Trump, we knew he had a relationship with Jeffrey Epstein dating back in the 2000s, but this is an example of him actually ferrying both Jeffrey Ghislaine and an unknown young girl. Ghislaine Maxwell was on the jet, on the Trump jet, jet also. So, right. so the reporter for this Maximum Golf article, when he observed in the article, he thought, you know, first of all, President Trump was upset that Jeffrey Epstein was making him late. And he said, where are you, Jeff? Where are you? Where are you? you know, he's pacing back and forth. And this is where he said, uh, you know, you, you, you're never late for somebody's jet. Somebody else yeah, somebody's jet. So, so this reporter noted that when uh, Mr. Epstein arrived, because he didn't know who Jeffrey Epstein was. He didn't? No. At that he, time? No, uh, the reporter didn't. Because oh, the reporter did. I thought, yeah. yeah. The reporter did. didn't know who Jeffrey Epstein was or anything like that. He found out later who it was. Uh, when they arrived, he assumed that uh, uh, Epstein and Maxwell were a married couple. 
and the girl was their daughter a daughter or niece or something like that that uh, when they arrived he assumed that uh, uh, Epstein and Maxwell were a married couple and, and the girl was, was their daughter a daughter or niece or something like that okay so here we have an example of Trump transporting an underage young girl a minor so for those of you in the Trump camp who are saying, oh, you know, there's no record of Trump on Lolita Express, there's no need for it. Trump had his own plane. Aside from this account, how many other times did Trump help to transport underage girls for Epstein's little blackmail international child sex pedophile ring. I mean, think about it. Okay, so Trump never appeared in the flight logs, but that's because most likely Trump had his own jet. He didn't need to fly on the Lolita Express. Trump flew on the Trump Express, you know? I mean, there's proof right here that Trump had Epstein on his plane. Trump knew Epstein. And it's not just 15 years ago. It goes back 25 years ago, maybe even further. So just keep that in mind as you're watching the rest of this. Trump is not innocent. Trump is deeply implicated in this sex trafficking ring. No matter what he tries to say or how he tries to distance himself from Epstein, the evidence shows that Trump is deeply involved. Okay? That, then he said that in the article itself. Yes, and, and wow. there's another, there another person on the plane, too, was uh, President Trump's sister. It doesn't say which sister, but I have narrowed it down based on the explanation and description of uh, where they're going uh, to President Trump's uh, sister, uh, Manhattan Bank Executive Elizabeth Trump Grau, who has since retired in Palm Beach, and her husband, film producer James Grau, is a member of the Mar-a-Lago and the president of a documentary and film movie production company called Charisma Productions. So they were on the plane also, so they can potentially either be, uh, let's say, subpoenaed if this ever does come into an investigation, or could themselves talk about well, Wait a minute, the there's, there's the FAA requires a passenger manifest. Well, manifest. And so that's how we know, for example, the Lily Lake Express uh, passengers. The names of every passenger on a private plane has to be recorded. That's correct. And that's this situation has been very odd because there hasn't been any questions about this, uh, this flight, which would fall into the time frame of investigation, though two years after what the FBI says they're looking into currently, 2002 to 2005, activity by Jeffrey Epstein, this is in relation to traffic between New York and Florida. All right, so Donald Trump knew, uh, he obviously knew uh, Jeffrey Epstein because he invited him to ride on his jet. And, that, that, and the way the reporter worded it says this wasn't an unusual thing at all, that Epstein hits to ride you know, on a regular basis. And he brought... Not unusual. Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, the handler, the Mossad handler, mm -hmm. daughter of, of Robert Maxwell, the deceased Mossad spy. And um, the namesake of Lady Ghislaine, the, the yacht that he fell off of naked and drowned. Mind you, President Trump called his, uh, his uh, yacht Princess Trump, the Trump Princess. So it's interesting. So if he named it after his daughter, he did exactly what Robert Maxwell did with his. He yet. named it after, Yv after Ivanka, Ivanka Yael. All right. So Donald Trump knew Jeffrey Epstein. He knew Ghislaine Maxwell. He invited them on his private jet to, to ride with him. Okay. So they, if he knew him, if he knew Maxwell, and he knew um, Epstein. Epstein. Who and he knew other? that they weren't married and they didn't have children. That's right. So who's the... So yeah. the little girl gets on with makeup and jewelry and, and uh, uh, Trump looks at her and knows exactly who she is. Maybe not her name, but he knows this is not She's Epstein's not daughter. Because President Trump himself said in New York Magazine 2002, he'd known Mr. Epstein for 15 years. Okay, that's the span of a, a child growing up. And when, when did he say that? He said it uh, to New York Magazine 2002. That's the infamous quote about, oh, Jeffrey's a terrific guy. He loves girls on the younger side. For 15, he knew him for 15 years. Take 15 it back years. to 87. All right. See, when you review all of this evidence, it, it becomes obvious that Trump's impeachment isn't just an option, it's a necessity. 
Now, I know, unfortunately, that gives a very negative impact to American politics. And, like I said earlier, this coming out now may lead to the downfall of America. Or, you know, we could end up with a Tulsi Gabbard who, you know, on the surface pretends to buck the establishment, but she'll also be working for the establishment as well. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I will say that it is very likely that Donald Trump should be impeached, indicted, and then tried on this. I mean, I mean you can't deny his, his in involvement in this, this sex trafficking, right? But this, this picture, or that was a picture, but this uh, trip was 2000. Yes. So he, he had known him for over Four a years. decade. Yes, on that point. So he knew exactly who Epstein was. He knew what he was. He knew he was a pervert. And I'm going to, I'm going to go out and say, I believe Donald Trump knew and knows today that Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell are Israeli spies. Mm. Because I believe Donald Trump works for Israel. I've come to the sad conclusion after two and a half years of watching him that he has not done anything that he promised his supporters, but he's done everything that Israel has wanted. And I believe he's an Israeli operative. Maybe not an agent, but a man who is uh, compromised and deeply uh, entrapped by his uh, sexual appetite for young, attractive women, and uh, possibly has been possibly has been involved with uh, underage girls through Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, definitely so, lawsuits alleged. I, I've never. I don't have any friends that are convicted pedophiles. Do you, Doc? No. I kind of steer away from them after they're no. convicted. I don't know. I've never known. I've never had a, a close friendship with any pedophile, to the, my knowledge, knowing that he's a pedophile. That's right. And certainly one that's convicted. President Trump has two. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein and George Nader. The and Middle George Nader, the guy that just got busted. That's right. With child sex photos on his phone. So we have, uh, we have a link here to child sex crimes. We have one more. Items to cover. Yeah. Today. All right. Let's let's go ahead, Doc. All right. Well, uh, it's probably already filtering out to most of the uh, major news outlets today, and you might have already seen this. But this has been a disturbing. It started off with uh, the Morning Joe program on MSNBC, and I know the reaction might be from viewers and listeners. Oh well, they're just out to trash the president. Try you know do anything they can to harm him. Well, they, they've been guests of President Trump, just to know, they've been guests as recently as 2007, 2018 at the Mar-a-Lago, so that, we that's... We should ask, uh, ask them if they have ever met Jeffrey Epstein. So, so what we're about to show you here in this uh, next uh, clip that is being shared everywhere is regarding a party that took place in 1992. Is that right? This is the 1992 party that took place at Trump's resort before he opened it to the public as Mar-a-Lago, so just keep that in mind, okay? 1992. And NBC discovered this video in their video archives. Right. Discovered. So you, yeah. Well, I, I think what's happening is that they're digging now. Everybody's digging through their old video oh, for anything for that's there. marked Donald Trump. And it's important because President Trump now is on somewhat a record to say he distanced himself from Jeffrey Epstein. He said 14 years ago, as of 2019. So if they find anything, anything after 2005, the president is caught in a lie. Look, but this particular video was 1992. So I mean, this kind of establishes that there was a much closer relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and Jelaine Maxwell than has been previously reported. That, you know, it was enough to be partying and partying close. And what you're going to see here in this uh, clip is then citizen Trump really letting loose. So this is, t what, 27 years ago. Right. Uh, okay, so let's watch it. This is uh, courtesy of what NBC has released today. Right, yes. so this is uh, clip number 31 for Control. Seven years ago. We're going to see in here. This is There's President Trump with Jeffrey Epstein right in frame. Right behind them, as you'll see, is, is Ghislaine Maxwell. She's actually she's right behind here. Them. She's here. So she's at the Mar-a-Lago. There's, President Trump. There's Epstein to the right. Who's the guy on the left? We haven't identified him yet, but we're on that. 
Uh, the, as you see, right, the, girl, the, the woman with the earrings is Ghislaine. You'll see her come into frame and she's so right behind Jeffrey. So this party uh, see, right, right there, okay. 28 women were flown in for this party. It's a special party where uh, only President Trump and Jeffrey were really the, the primary hosts. Everyone else was a guest, a woman flown in, either a, a cheerleader or a model. Okay, what is, uh, they're saying this is what Trump is saying, pointing to one of the women saying she's hot. Yes, he was, he was commenting on the, the women as they're dancing in, in the open. Uh, there's, uh, as you're going to see another subtitle here, because it's hard to make out what President Trump is saying. Uh, there's been, uh, we've, we've looked at the lips, basically, of President Trump to be able to determine it. And he said something there that it was very funny to Epstein, and he basically bent over laughing yes. at whatever Donald Trump said to him. But they're, they're talking about the women who are dancing at this party. Yes, and, and think about that, just the laughing part. How many people can make you fall over laughing? Your closest friends, I, your closest your colleagues. Closest friend. And it, it shows you the depth of the relationship. At a time, uh, it was only a couple of years after, as we already noted, the 1989 meeting on Robert Maxwell's uh, yacht that included all the major players out of Iron Contra and the alleged Mossad operation. And so uh, Trump's on that yacht in 1989 with Ghislaine Maxwell. Right. Who's now at this party. Not with Ghislaine, with Robert Maxwell. And this one right around the time that she'd met Jeffrey Epstein officially. This is 1992, the year that Ghislaine was really introduced and, uh, by our understanding, became the handler of Jeffrey Epstein. I, I, look, I, Donald Trump needs to be questioned. Uh, you want to have a special prosecutor? Now's the time to have a special prosecutor. I would fully support a special prosecutor. Just don't let it be Ken Starr. Mm who defended Jeffrey Epstein. Remember Ken Starr from the Clinton, Monica Lewinsky? That's right. Monica Lewinsky, a possible another Mossad agent in the White House, and who represent, who who is her investigator? Ken Starr. And then where does Ken Starr show up defending Jeffrey Epstein in Florida? Give me a break. Ken Starr was on the take the whole time. Be part of the operation. All right, you get Alan Dershowitz, you get all these people in. It's always a sickening mess. But the people, well, forget about po party politics, forget about the 2020 election, forget about it. I, I, a, lot of, a lot of the Trump supporters are going to be furious with me, and I realize that, but I'm after truth. Yes. And I want to, I want to expose and bring down this evil, wicked, satanic, Luciferian, uh, albatross that is uh, choking the life out of this nation and it is very evil and wicked and children have disappeared they've been used uh, I believe that they've been sacrificed in, in satanic rituals kind of like the temple that's on Jeffrey Epstein's yes. island why why has nobody been in that temple no law enforcement has been in it how's this how has this been allowed to go on for decades and nothing, no one has entered his property to investigate. There has to be some power, some force that is able to prevent law enforcement from carrying out an investigation. And not only that, there has to be some force out there that is able to silence hundreds of young women. Thousands. Of thousands. Young. Thousands. And they may be dead, Doc. They may be dead. If, if it's true the police found thousands of photographs, then the police are obligated to track down those girls who are now adults. Let's see how many of them are alive. Oh, I, I, on that real quick, the question of the carpet remover, the towel yes. remover. Uh, I spoke to someone the weekend, and there he might be that that could be used to crush bones. Of Mach course. Heavy machinery like that can Absolutely. be used Absolutely. When you're talking about a carpet and tile extractor, yes, that's something to crush very hard substance and rip it up. So think of it, moving that from the island to the New York mansion, which is now the epicenter of this alleged domestic side of the trafficking operation. What in the world could Mr. Epstein have been doing with that? What about the mansion out in, in the middle of the New Mexico desert, the Zorro Ranch? Zorro on the old uh, King Ranch. Oh, oh, by the former governor? Yes. Has, anybody, has law enforcement gone in there yet? Well, he wasn't a sex uh, offender there, Rick. The laws are too weak, apparently. He yeah. was registered as a sex offender in New York and in Florida, but not in New Mexico. Is there a federal investigation? Is there an FBI investigation right now on Jeffrey Epstein? 
Only out of New York, and though the prosecutors, the AUSA for the case, have said it could uh, expand out to, again, Florida properties, New Mexico but it's focused in New York right well, now. Well, what's it take to get an FBI investigation of an international child sex trafficking network? What's it take to get an FBI investigation of uh, a foreign spy uh, network that's blackmailing influential Americans? What do you have to do to get a, an investigation? Well, they're too busy investigating uh, other rabbit trails related to other well, issues. You, you have to be Christian. I mean, think about the only major sex operation that the FBI or the Department of Justice has looked into in the past two decades is related to the Catholic Church. I mean, they, they were happy to spend the resources and rightfully so in this yes. in that case, but my point is, is they did spend in that case. They did open up an instant, you know, an investigation to, into sex crimes. They're not doing it in this case. They're not looking even at one percent of the evidence. There's no at all. effort at all. There's no evidence at all that the FBI is involved in this case. All right, we're at our one hour thirty minute mark. Uh, we've loaded you up with a lot. There's a lot more to come tomorrow and. Uh, for days to come as we continue to dig into this Jeffrey Epstein scandal. It's not just, it, it, look, it's bad enough that it's involving teenage girls and there may have been murders, uh, sacrifices, but the bigger picture is an Israeli intelligence operation to blackmail influential people around the world, primarily the United States of America. And we've been wondering how did, how did Israel succeed in taking over the USA in, in the span of 40, 50 years? They have taken over this country. What do you think it might be through the most ambitious honey trap blackmail operation probably in the history of mankind? So who's going to investigate them? Nobody. Because everybody who has any responsibility or power or influence is compromised. Right. Judges, FBI agents, Prosecutors, politicians, they're all compromised. So you can't expect an investigation because they'd be investigating themselves. They'd be incriminating themselves. I mean, that's a successful takedown of a country. Right. So how deep does it go? I mean, seriously, how deep does it go? In, in just this episode alone, we've seen the connections between Trump and Michael Cohen and Alex Acosta and Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell, and Robert Maxwell, and Mohammed bin Salman, or Bone Salman. How deep does it go? The Mossad, the extension of the Israeli government, the 007 spy ring of Israel, has successfully infiltrated America. This could be the takedown of America. So just get ready. I mean, the tentacles are so far reaching. If this Epstein operation is, does bear out, or if it does bear out that this was, the truthfully, this was an international child sex trafficking blackmail ring, then how many other politicians are involved in all of this satanic, child sex rape blackmail it boggles the mind I don't know so there's that from true news I mean this is just amazing information and if if by now you cannot make the leap that Donald J Trump is involved then I don't think you ever will I mean this guy needs to be impeached. He should not be running in 2020. Look here, look, look. There's this video here which shows Katie Johnson talking about how Donald J. Trump raped her. Let's take a look at this. The second time that I saw Mr. Trump um, was same scenario. He was uh, on looking at an orgy and uh, Tiffany came over to me and, and said that Donald Brown Trump had requested that I perform oral sex on him. Um, he came in and I was basically tied to a bed um, with pantyhose. Uh, and he tied him in. It was, it was so tight, it, it hurt to even lay there. And I tried to, you know, try to say something. I was like, you know. 
Now, this was explained as Katie Johnson being hired to participate in a fantasy for Donald Trump where he would he wanted to have a rape fantasy where he walked in on two of his workers, supposed workers who were he found them kissing and then he got upset and then he decided to uh uh I think this is the one. Yeah, where he decided to to this might be something different. This that might be a different episode, but it, 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 was, it was twisted, man. I mean, listen to this. You just you know, shut up, man. You know, shut up, bitch. You know this is was basically like he was, he was being really, really rough, and 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 I started to get scared, and and he was you know basically like ripping my clothes off, and and I was actually really upset. I got freaked out. And just turned into this animal. I was like a completely different. I'm a completely different person. I couldn't do anything about it. A completely different person, Donald Trump. So this is on the Katie Justice for Katie website, and I'll will include that in a link on this video and on the blog article that this video will show up in. So there you have it. There are the connections so far i mean who knows what else is going to bear out during the course of this trial um i know it's been a long what hour and 30 hour and 45 minutes and i'm glad that you stuck with me this long because there is just so much more information to be seen and in the article where this video is posted i'll be posting more uh uh podcasts from blackstone intelligent where he goes into detail so far he's got five podcasts already that he's put out with information on the Epstein uh, sex ring, the pedophile sex ring. So, I mean, if you go to read this article, you're going to be busy for a while. So, thanks again for watching, and this is Red Pill bringing you as much truth as possible. And remember, the truth is out there waiting to be found. Take the Red Pill. Take the red pill.